good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world listening to this, uh, the next iteration of Coffee with Cow podcast with myself, Chris Lawler. I'm the uh, CEO of Learn International. We're a, a boutique provider based in Ireland offering programming across Europe, Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk with our, our next guest, which is um, Andrea Bichelli. Uh, he's the International Relations Officer at the University of Pavia. And uh, we're very thankful for his time and for uh, him uh, contributing to, to the, uh, the podcast. So thanks for being with us today, Andrea. Yes. Thank you very much, Chris, for this uh, kind invitation. I'm very, you know, I'm very happy to join you, even if uh, just virtually. And uh, I'm connecting from from home, of course, during this time uh, of our lives. All our lives, I'm connecting from the city where I work. Uh, I work for the University of Pavia, and I'm connecting from the city of Pavia. I think you know that's uh, it's been commonplace with you know with this podcast. I mean, it started uh, based out of, of uh, you know the, the, the seismic changes in our industry that COVID nineteen has brought about, um, and you know before we start to go into that, because I'm really interested in hearing the, the you know the, the experience that yourself personally and your office and your university have undergone in the last two or three months. I mean, who would have imagined we would be sitting here today talking about this? But we are. But before that, just so. Uh, um, you know, our listeners can kind of uh, get a grip to things. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you come to be the International Relations Officer at the uh, University of Pavia? How did your career progress? Okay, yes, sure. You know, I was, uh, I started uh, with, um, I have a background in communication and public relations. When I was younger, and we speak about, uh, yeah, I'm turning 40 next year. So let's, <laughs> let's speak about 20 years ago when I started uh, university. I started with the media and communication. I don't know, maybe I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to work in the field of advertisement. But um, after three years of university, I had my first experience uh, abroad for one year in Finland as an Erasmus student. And then uh, I started to to become very interested in international matters, international relations. And this is why I turned my, my background in the university, focusing more on political science. And I started to think about uh, you know, my future. I wanted to enter the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So this is why, and when I graduated, uh, I, I was luck and uh, I received a scholarship from my university in Rome. And uh, I took that scholarship to go for uh, two years in, in, in Australia, where I spent uh, two years. <laughs> and I completed another, um, another, another degree, a Master of International Relations. That was a great period of my life living in Sydney. And I was there with my fiance, who is Italian. Now she's my wife. And I met her while I was an Erasmus student in Finland. So when we went to Australia, you know, she studied as well a Master of Economics, and our relation has become very special since then. And um, now I can say maybe, you know, I, 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 I don't really regret coming back to Italy, but at that time, uh, I felt Australia was very far away <laughs> from, from Italy. Actually, Australia is far away from everything. So, you know, my wife, she wanted to stay, but I said, oh, come on, let's go back to Italy because I don't want to become like the old Italian I meet here in Sydney. They're always crying because they would like to go back to Italy. I don't want to uh, grow up and, you know, uh, being in a very beautiful place, but missing Italy and whatever. Okay, so back to Italy, uh, another course in international relations uh, that was a particular course in order to be prepared uh, to, to face the national uh, competition because uh, there is an exam to pass to enter the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it didn't go well <laughs> and uh, it was now 10 years ago and my wife started a PhD here in, um, in Pavia, in economics, 
and it was 2009. So I started to, to, to think about plan B and uh, was looking for something uh, appealing for a job in the area of Milan, because Pavia is very close to Milan. And suddenly, you know, uh, I saw, actually my wife found it on, uh, on the news, uh, this advertisement for a job in Pavia with uh, international perspectives. So, you know, I applied uh, without knowing it was for the university. And then I started to work for the university in 2009. And, uh, you know, this is, this is it. And uh, I still have an, um, I still have a deep interest for international relations matter, for academic. And again, last year, uh, I completed another degree in, uh, in, another, uh, in another degree in political science and international studies. So, you know, we can say that uh, my academic background is quite, uh, is quite complete. Maybe one day there will be the chance to start a PhD, but now it's time to focus on, uh, on work. When I started here in Pavia in 2009, I started to, to, look, to look after international exchange programs, mainly for, uh, uh, not, not, not really the Erasmus one within, within Europe, but uh, mainly other, other programs with uh, Japan, uh, United States, South America, and that was great, uh, I, I tell you, because, um, I had really the feeling to give students, to our students, uh, an opportunity not really to change their lives, but uh, you know, to, to have a wider uh, comprehension of uh, international relations, other cultures, uh, that was great. In 2010, I started to, to manage, to coordinate uh, another special program we have here in Pavia, which is the Fund for Cooperation and Knowledge, which is a special program for incoming and outgoing students, and it's focused on uh, developing countries. So uh, we started to offer scholarships to complete master degrees entirely taught in English for students coming from developing countries. And on the other hand, we, every year we, have, we give the opportunity to our students to go abroad to a developing, to a developing country for study, to study, to make an internship or to, do, to carry on researches for their final thesis. And after that, uh, already in 2010, I think, I started to, to work for the international agreements of the entire university. And this is why, you know, when I, I, I was telling you, uh, my signature, you know, I like to think about myself as the international agreement analyst, as all the agreements of the university uh, with international partners, you know, they come through me, they, I analyze them and I negotiate them with international partners. And this is just great because I have the opportunity to deal with all the faculties, and the staff here at the University of Pavia and their international activities, international activities with their, you know, foreign partners. So uh, this has given me a wide uh, understanding of what's, what's going on in, at, at the international level here at the university. I, I lost count of the number of degrees and diplomas that you have you have studied, but it sounds like it's just a part of your life, and it's not good. Yeah. It's never going to be too long before you start your next one. Yeah, you know this is something uh, very very funny. You know, even my wife jokes about it. My colleagues, not not really about the degrees, because you have to know that uh, while I'm working, I keep on doing um, what we have because I, I work in the public field here, uh, the university is public and, you know, I can say work for in the public field, in the public administration. And here, you know, in order to advance your career, career you have to pass uh, competitive examinations. So I keep on studying, you know, every year I have from, let's say, from five to eight competitive examinations in order, uh, you know, even in, in, in order to progress, I like to say that, you know. Uh, to, to, to achieve, you know, other results in my career. I think that um, that's a positive thing from a career perspective, but it's also a positive thing from a personal perspective to always have that thirst for knowledge. And I think that, you know, as 
I suppose, stakeholders within the international mobility and education sector, you have to have a passion for that. Um, tell us about the experience that you had. I mean, when we were preparing for this, we were just saying, gosh, you know, can you imagine that we are sitting here doing a remote podcast now? Uh, when we first met four, five, six months ago, whatever it is, nine months ago now, uh, it was the furthest thing from our, our mind altogether. So talk us through uh, what has the last three months been like at University of Pavia, at your office and for yourself? Uh, everything has been reshaped. I can tell you that. And since the beginning of this crisis, um, for the International Relations Office, it has been tough because as you can imagine, we had many students abroad and we were wondering, we tried to understand what's, what was better for them, if to suggest them to come back to Italy or to stay abroad because you know, <laughs> Uh, traveling uh, was not the was not the easiest option, even in terms of uh, security and safety. And on the other hand, we had many students here in Pavia coming from countries all uh, all over the world. And again, uh, what, what what was better for them to suggest to go back to their families or to keep them here in Pavia? You know, inside uh, you know our. Uh, colleges, our inside the flats uh, here downtown in the city. So this is was this was very challenging, and the university itself uh, has been acting uh, with caution since the very beginning. And uh, on on the point for the students, uh, uh, the classes started uh, online, as you can imagine. And we reached also uh, a compromise in order to allow students to take exams, both written and oral, uh, online. And on the other hand, since the very beginning of this crisis, even the staff uh, like, uh, like me, we, st we had the opportunity to work, uh, to work remotely from home. As we, we, we say, uh, we call it a smart working here but this is working from home. And so uh, our lives, uh, you know, everything has changed. And again, the university has been acting, as I told you, with caution and always complying uh, with the indications of the government because, you know, we, the lockdown came at the very beginning of March and uh, the university, the rector, you know, the governance, decided to, to close the university. It was a tough decision, but you know, there, there was no alternative. The alternative was providing our students uh, with the possibility to keep on studying, to keep on working uh, online. They, you know, they started to plan the different, as, as in all the countries of the world, you know, I've been hearing about these three phases of the crisis. So phase one is going to end soon, next week, then there will be phase two, which will run uh, for all the summer, and uh, there will be phase three in uh, in September. I can tell you that uh, you know online uh, online activities. Uh, th there will be the main activities. I worry for uh, you know all the summer, of course, and even for the first semester of next year. So I really look forward to 2021. Uh, and tell me, uh, that's interesting, smart working. Um, I haven't heard that phrase before, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's just, I've been cocooned up here, so, um, but I like it. I think it's, 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 a, it's more of a positive spin to a situation. And I think everything on a daily basis is a personal decision as to whether you approach something with a positive or you approach something negatively, and that is really a personal thing. And I think uh, just the you know the choice of of positively orientated phrases and words to describe things on a small level helps a lot. I like um, the. Um, I'd like to look a little bit more at uh, a, you know phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, uh, what are you doing uh, to prepare? for phase two and phase three uh, at the moment in, in Pavia, what's your office doing? 
Mm -hmm. So, uh, as I told you, phase number one is going to end soon, and uh, phase two is starting next week. And <laughs> as a, it's, it's, it's not funny, really, but phase two is going to be very similar to phase number one. And uh, we, I, we will keep on working uh, from home, uh, schools uh, will be, we'll, we'll stay close. Um, so concerning, concerning my, my, my activity, um, we started since the very, I started since the very beginning to deal with international partners, partners in order to try to, um, to shape uh, programs for this summer because uh, we had uh, different types of activities. Uh, we were waiting for students, for example, for, from the US for this summer. And, uh, you know, we were looking forward, we were coming, welcoming them in, uh, in Pavia, in our city, in our university. So, since the beginning, uh, we understood that it was not possible to host them in Pavia. And we're thinking, um, we're, we're shaping, we're projecting some other activities that, of course, they can do online. Uh, believe me, uh, I... I don't think that um, doing things online is the same uh, than doing them face to face in person and uh, coming here uh, in our university and in our city. And I think the majority of the people, uh, you know, they, they will agree with me. But on the other hand, this might be also an opportunity to, you know, to make people uh, visually, visually move. I can think about people who don't have the chance uh, to go abroad or vice versa to come to Pavia, to come here to our city, to our university. So we're thinking also about them with this virtual activity. And for example, just to make an example, we're uh, designing uh, an online research programs for, uh, for this summer, which is uh, a program which will uh, last for four weeks in, uh, in July. And uh, we, we don't think that it will uh, go on uh, during August because, of course, we want, <laughs> we would like to go on uh, on a holiday or vacation. I really hope it will be possible, but I'm not sure about that. So uh, we would like to give students, both in Pavia and abroad, the opportunity to meet uh, online for this research program. And uh, we have been thinking about uh, six groups with uh, a mentor each and six groups which will focus on six different disciplines. Uh, for example, computer science, political science, archaeology, uh, molecular biology, economics, and risk management. So this is, uh, uh, they are not fixed areas. We are still uh, thinking and negotiating these areas with our international partners. But this is it for, uh, you know, for this summer, this is the very best we can, we can do. On the other hand, uh, thinking about September to phase number three, okay, that will be different. But again, the university is acting with, uh, with caution because, uh, you know, safety of our students is fundamental. But I can tell you that uh, right now, uh, the university is already thinking about starting classes in a, let's call it in a blended way. So the classes with lessons will be both online and in person. And when I say in person, you know, we will avoid to have uh, crowded classes as it used to be before, because uh, I, I don't want to say that, you know, our, uh, our halls are as small. But of course, we have many students, so um, you know there will be. Uh, there were they, they, they used to be crowded, and it, it it was good and it was nice to have so many young people studying uh, studying together. Uh, I'm sure for next semester this will not be possible because uh, we we have to keep distance. Um, you know, at least uh, I, I think uh, <laughs> it's the same abroad. We say one one meter at least. And again, looking at our international activity, since, uh, since March, we are still dealing with, other, with our international partners, because on the one hand, we would like to assure that um, 
you know, exchanges programs like Erasmus, bilateral programs with the universities in Japan, in Americas, you know, we, 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 we would like to keep them going on, but uh, with some, as we call them, virtual exchanges. And on the other hand, we would like to involve our international partners in this uh, virtual, um, in these blended classes. It means that, for example, as another part of my, of my job, I deal, I deal with visiting professors coming from institutions from all over the world. And uh, for next year, we suggested to them, uh, of course, to apply for the second semester because crossing our fingers, I can say that second semester, finally, it will be safe uh, to travel and to come to Pavia. Uh, you know, everything has been running very fast. Uh, we, we were not prepared uh, because, you know, we used to have um, online spaces uh, to provide lessons, but everything happened very fast. And I, I, I think that now we can see the results and we can be, uh, every, everyone, of how, everyone of us working for the university, we can be very proud of what, what we have been achieving so far both uh, in terms of, um, again, international relations, because we're doing our very best to keep relations going on. And also uh, on the side, you know, thinking about students and the opportunity they received, uh, you know, to know, uh, we, we didn't want them to, to waste time. And just let me tell you, for example, uh, that uh, our governance approved uh, what we call um, um, a hybrid uh, Erasmus, a hybrid exchange uh, experience, because as I was telling you, we have students we are, who, who are currently uh, abroad at the moment, they have not decided to come back to Pavia, so we want to give them the opportunity to attend online courses in the host university abroad, but at the, uh, on the other hand, we um, we, we give them the opportunity also to attend classes here in Pavia because, of course, now they have the opportunity while staying, for example, in, uh, in Spain, uh, let's see, in Barcelona, they have the opportunity to attend classes both in, in Spain and in Pavia, which before it was not possible, of course. Uh, that's really interesting. I, I, I <clears throat> just like to, to look at that for a minute. So we have um, a crisis which is acting for our industry as, as, a, as a great disruptor. Um, it's questioning the bedrock upon which we've delivered programs, in-person programs, and even our mobility programs. Um, it's put a, a roadblock there for us. Um, and institutions are having to um, innovate. And within their own systems, and uh, however that works um, um, within their own university machine, you know, what's possible, what's not. and. Uh, it's interesting to see, you know, to see that there's this, <clears throat> be it, it may be a short-term model of, of the ability for students to enroll in, 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 in the two different organizations uh, during their Erasmus experience. Um, do you see that as being something that will extend beyond the COVID crisis? Is there a potential concern um, from, you know, if we were extrapolating that out into, you know, joint or dual degrees or th those types of things, um, is there is there a future that's bigger than just COVID-19 response for that type of a model? This is my personal opinion, of course, and mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that I really look forward to things becoming normal again. And when I say normal, looking at the international exchanges, you know, I would like students really uh, to go abroad and to come to Pavia uh, in person. This is something uh, fundamental. Uh, crucial for their experience and you know I can tell you that because uh, at the beginning of this chat I told you a little bit about my experience of a student when I was younger and I still keep memories and good memories of my experiences abroad so uh, being in Finland for example being in Australia this is something that of course online uh, you, 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 you can't have the same experience. So, uh, again, 
things will go, we, we will be normal uh, again in the future, and I think they will be better than they used to be in the past, mainly because we have been through uh, this experience uh, with the COVID-19. Mm. That, that's that's where I mean you know a couple of more questions if that's okay. Um, I was looking for the silver lining. I want this podcast to be a, a, a positive. I want us to unpack the challenges we've had, but then I want us to think about um, how can we take the silver lining. How can we take um, positivity going forward from what we've had to we've been confronted with, and what as you say, and I agree with you, you should be proud, and the team at the University of Berea should be proud about what you've done. You know, in a short space of time, <clears throat> excuse me, you've explained to us stuff, you know, a, a progress that has, is beyond quite a lot of other universities that we would have spoken to. So I, I think it's very impressive. Um, so your silver lining on a professional and on a personal level for, for having gone through COVID-19, what, what is that? Um, personal level, I can tell you that um, I had the chance uh, during these two months lockdown in my house I had the chance to, to spend a great time and a lot of time with my two daughters. One is two years and the other one is six years. So I think this is something positive that uh, will go even beyond uh, this lockdown time because, uh, I, you know, I don't want to be too much romantic, uh, if you know what I'm meaning. But uh, I think we, we, we will keep this experience in the deep of our hearts, uh, even in the future. So I think that at personal level, um, looking about uh, you know, the, the relations within my family, uh, they will, we, we, we will take this uh, in a positive manner. Uh, we will bring this period uh, and we will appreciate what have what we have been doing uh, so far during this month together, making homework with my daughter, uh, playing outside in the garden, you know, every, every, every day. And of course, again, at personal level, I think that we will really appreciate what we have, uh, meaning, uh, you know, our social life, uh, be, be back to our social life, meeting friends, uh, you know, hanging around the city, restaurants. I think we, we look at these activities with a different eye, uh, not giving everything for, for granted. And, you know, this is uh, personal. And uh, professional, uh, you know, uh, I think that um, uh, at professional level, this working from home, it will be something that now, uh, as I was telling you, we were not prepared uh, to do that, but now we're doing it and we're doing it uh, very well. So uh, again, maybe in the future, there will be the possibility and it, it should will be the chance to mix, uh, you know, the old way of working with this new way of working. And uh, yes, it's fun in Italy because again, we call it smart working, but smart working means also that, for example, uh, on a day, you, you know, if you have your kids at home because they're sick and you have to look after them, maybe you don't need to uh, necessarily, um, you don't have to take a, a day off from, from your work. You know, you just can look after them while staying at home and then maybe you can uh, you, you can do your job, you can do your work, uh, you know, during the night, after dinner. So uh, we will be able, again, to look uh, to our jobs with uh, a different perspective. And again, at professional level, going back to what we do uh, for, the, for international students, international relations, um, yes, uh, I think, and maybe I, I can connect to what I was saying before, um, we will bring this experience in, in the future, keeping in mind that uh, personal experiences of uh, traveling abroad, of visiting other universities for a semester, for an entire year, is something that you cannot uh, achieve, you cannot, uh, you cannot do. Uh, sitting uh, from you know sitting from your home uh, on a computer but uh, again now we have been experiencing all these 
methods of um, modern, not, not really modern, other, other ways of uh, providing courses and even research activities. That's great. I, I, I really appreciate you um, talking through that. Um, I haven't had to mention the phrase new normal up till now because uh, I, um, our conversation has just worked through. It's, it's, it's a logical this is what's going to happen, and I and I appreciate that. You know, um, what are you going? What's the first thing you're going to do um, when we are after phase three? There is no restrictions. What's the What's the, the thing you want to do? And this is tough because lockdown is going to end uh, next week, but I don't think that we will have the chance to to move from our region, the Lombardy, which. Uh, for example, in Italy, it has been very, very much hit by the, by the, by the COVID-19. So uh, when it ends, I really look forward to moving from, you know, from this region and go to visit my friends, relatives in, in the other regions where they, where they live. Because originally, I'm not from Pavia, so I would like to go, I would like to, go to see my family, my parents in, uh, in a city in L'Aquila. And again, also my wife, she's not from Pavia, so uh, she's closer than L'Aquila, you know. Uh, her city is Genoa, uh, which is just one hour from here. So I think these are the very first things that uh, we will do. I mean, <laughs> getting on the car and uh, visiting our, our families in, in, in our cities. You that know? makes perfect sense. I think <laughs> there's, a, there's that... Uh, need and desire and the vacuum of of uh, personal touch and and spending time personally with with our families. I think a common theme that's run through our conversation today has been uh, the importance of um, personal relationships in terms of proximity of people. You know, in a professional instance, sitting in somebody's office, talking to them, yeah. and really bonding a relationship. And from a personal perspective, you know, being able to 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 hug your, your friends and family and, and being exactly. able to be and in the same instance, you know. If I can add, uh, you know, uh, looking at the university, I, I used to make uh, jokes with everybody when we talk on the telephone, we meet online. And, you know, I, I keep on repeating that as soon as this is off, we have to organize a very big party in the university and have, uh, you know, the, really have the chance uh, to stay together, relaxing a little bit in our beautiful courtyards. You know, uh, this is something um, very important. I look forward to doing it. I, I agree. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for that because um, uh, there has, you have to envision the time when that is possible. And um, you know the time between now and then becomes less and less as we as we move forward each week. So, um, <clears throat> so I, I I couldn't agree with you more. Well, I think you know that's great for today, and I appreciate the conversation and and your openness and in talking through how it's affected you personally and professionally and, and what have you. And I'm sure the listeners. Um, as well as myself have been fascinated to hear what's going on. Um, so uh, listeners, thanks very much for joining us again. Um, tune back in next week um, when we have, again, somebody else from someplace else in international education giving us their experience and, and what have you. So uh, Andrea, thank you so much for, for being with us and um, uh, we will look forward to seeing you in person again at some stage yeah. in, in the coming months or, or next year or those types of things. Yeah. So, Thank you very much for your time, Chris, for this uh, very nice chat. And of course, you you know uh, feel invited to come to Pavia as soon as you you can. You know, it would Absolutely. be great to have you here. Looking forward to it. Enjoy your day. Okay. Bye, Chris. Take care. Ciao.